Bam, 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 bam. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Scrappy, and as you guys know, the new season just released today, and I'm here to give you guys a video on how to master ballistic in season 17 of Apex Legends. Without further ado, let's get it. I spent the first 10 hours of season 17 solo queuing with ballistic, trying to hit masters as fast as I can as a part of my solo to master series. And before I get into any other tip, the first thing that I want to tell you guys is that ballistic is definitely made for. M and K players. And so if you're thinking to try out Ballistic or you haven't tried them out yet and you're on controller, good luck. You're going to struggle for the first few hours. And I wouldn't be ashamed of that either because it took me quite some time to get used to it. There are so many new buttons that you have to press just to maneuver around his third weapon. It's pretty damn confusing trying to remember all these different buttons you have to press. And it may often get you killed. And if you're on controller, then you better be playing Claw. That's because there are so many buttons that you have to press that if you aren't playing Claw, then you're going to be standing still a lot of the time trying to figure that out. So at least by playing Claw, you can help help maintain your movement still while mashing all these other buttons but even then it's quite difficult and I can't help but think it's a lot easier to play a legend like ballistic while on keyboard you have all the keys right in front of you MK players are already used to hitting a bunch of different keys and it really just seems a lot easier with keyboard but it doesn't make it impossible if you're on controller it's just gonna take you some time to adjust I initially thought that ballistic was going to be completely broken he has a passive that gives him a third weapon and with this weapon you cannot have any attachments he has a tactical that locks onto the enemy and sort of acts like a heat seeking missile and will follow them wherever they go so as long as they don't run behind cover and once it hits them it does 20 damage and it places an overheating mechanism on their weapon and it lasts for about 10 seconds and if you get shot by this and you shoot your weapon until it overheats then it deals an extra 30 damage to you and lastly you have his ultimate which gives you and your teammates a speed boost fast reload and infinite ammo but for you as a ballistic main specifically it'll pack a punch whatever gun you have in your sling slot the sling slot is going to be your extra weapon that you carry and as a ballistic main it only pack a punches your sling weapon none of the other two weapons that you have will get upgraded those guns will have fast reload but they won't be upgraded and it took me a while to figure out what kind of weapon you should have as your third sling weapon how you should play around as tactical and I feel like I found that out after playing him for 10 hours but of course there's still a lot more for me to learn my first tip is going to revolve around his passive. What kind of weapons should you be looking for for your third sling weapon? It took me some time to figure that out. I think the best weapons that you can use for a sling weapon are going to be SMGs, a car, Volt, R9, or Prowler, an RE45, and perhaps a Devotion or a Havoc. And I'll explain that further when I'm talking about his ultimate, but for now you should primarily be using one of those guns that I just mentioned for a sling weapon. Those guns are crazy overpowered with his ultimate. The second tip I want to give you guys will pertain to his tactical. His tactical isn't as strong as I initially thought it was going to be, and it's kind of of effective. You want to shoot it at the enemy as much as you can, typically as a fight's about to start, which will more than likely take that enemy out of the fight for about 10 seconds. That's about how long his tactical lasts. And at that point, you create a window for yourself to go and flush out the other two enemies. Just remember that whoever you hit with this tactical will be able to shoot for a little bit, as long as they keep their weapon from overheating. And to be honest, if you're the enemy that gets stuck by his tactical, you can shoot a decent amount of bullets before your gun overheats. But it is a major distraction for the enemy. Instead of shooting at your team until you guys die, they have to take into consideration that overheating tool. And that's one more thing for them to worry about. And like I said, this is distracting and it can mess them up. And a lot of the times you'll find that these players just remove themselves from the fight because taking an extra 30 damage for a total of 50 damage well, that's a good amount. And so you find a little bit of usefulness using it in this way. All in all, I just don't want you guys to think that it's the craziest ability ever. It's a lot weaker than you would imagine. So try not to rely on this too much. But if you use correctly, then it could be pretty effective. My third tip will also be about his tactical. Most of the time, you'll find yourself shooting it towards the enemy once it auto locks onto them. And that's a great way to use it, but you kind of leave yourself vulnerable while doing this. It does take some time to line it up correctly so that it can auto lock onto them. And if the enemy's behind cover, then it's going to go straight into the cover that they're sitting behind and at that point you pretty much wasted your tactical what you instead can do is shoot it towards the enemy's feet so let's say they're behind a tree and if you use the auto lock system it's going to go straight into the tree try shooting it to the right or to the left of him on the bottom by his feet kind of using it like an ash snare and about a second or two later if the enemy's still within the radius it'll attach onto them and begin the overheating process so what i'm trying to say is that there are times when you need to auto lock onto the enemy but if they're behind cover then it's better to shoot it at their feet so you don't waste the tactical and my fourth tip kind of works the same way you can use this tactical very similar to how you would use revenant's tactical or a fuse knuckle cluster or once again an ash snare using it to block off entry points if there's an area that i don't want the enemy to push freely i'll shoot my wisp right there preempt so that if they do push that angle, then they'll get trapped by my wisp. It'll do damage to them, which lets me know exactly where they're at if my back's turned towards them. 
and this can help you out a lot in your fights, especially within buildings. Since there is so much cover within buildings, it's pretty difficult to use an auto lock system within them. So shoot it at the ground at a choke point, a doorway, around the corner, and let the enemy walk into it. You can also shoot it on a door and it kind of sticks to it like a mag attack. And if there's an enemy on the other side of the door and they run off of the door and the door now opens up their way, once again, your tactical will latch onto them. So as long as they're still within the radius, you'll find that his tactical will be more effective right now while players are still trying to figure out how to respond to it. But like I said, it isn't that strong Strong. So eventually players will catch on to that and find ways to counter it and realize it's really not all that powerful. So abuse it right now while you can. And lastly, my last couple of tips will revolve around his ultimate. I mentioned exactly what it does before and I mentioned the guns that you should be using before. Just to remind you guys, you should be using an RE45, an SMG of your choice, or a gun like a Havoc and Devotion. If you didn't know, his RE45 when upgraded gives you hammer points attached to them. Hammer points do more damage when you crack their shield and start shooting them for flesh. And the fire rate of the RE45 is disgusting. It's especially with all the attachments that come when it's upgraded. And that makes it the strongest weapon I think that you could use while using his ultimate. Fast reloads, major damage, very fast strafe speeds, you can't beat it. And it's the same logic for the SMGs. High damage output, super fast reloads, super quick strafe speeds, you can't beat that. And then as for the Havoc and Devotion, these are viable but I much prefer the other ones. Havoc and Devotion when fully upgraded come with a turbocharger and that turns them into the highest DPS guns in the game. They're very powerful. But in all honesty, I'd rather have an AR as a primary weapon, another SMG as my backup, and an SMG or RE45 as my sling weapon. Because using the Havoc and Devo as your sling weapon, although it may be strong, the strafe speed's not as fast, hip fires with ARs and LMG is just so wonky now. And if you're already carrying an AR in your primary slot, it's kind of overkill. So if you do decide to use either of these weapons, maybe use two SMGs as your primary and secondary weapons, an SMG and a shotgun. Shotgun, SMG and a wingman and reserve your sling weapon for the havoc or devotion I also heard a lot of players saying that they like to use a rampage for this the first magazine when you're upgrading your weapon Using your ultimate for the rampage does give you the thermite boost But after you use the first mag the thermite effect goes away and now you're just shooting a really mid rampage So I wouldn't recommend that if you guys are using it Like I said, it's going to take a lot of time to figure all of this out So please make sure that you're ordering your guns correctly You don't want to accidentally have your sling weapon as your 30 30 like I did right here in this clip because once you use your ultimate you can't switch out your sling weapon and it's such a huge waste also for your sling weapon I recommend that you use the same ammunition as one of your primary or secondary weapons that's just so you don't have to carry a third different type of ammo stack because there may be a moment in a fight where you do need his third weapon and it's much better to use the ammo that you already have instead of carrying a third different type of ammo stack for it of course when you have his ultimate though you don't have to worry about ammo because you have unlimited ammo for it but just be aware of that also when you're using his ultimate and you're using a sling weapon, which is the upgraded weapon, make sure that you don't holster your weapon. Because when you holster your weapon while you have your sling weapon out, it brings back one of your primary secondary weapons, the two weapons that aren't upgraded. And although you get fast reload with it, again, it kind of defeats the purpose of his ultimate if you're not using the upgraded weapon. And this is what kind of tricked me too, because while I'm micro positioning myself within a fight, I always holster my weapon so I can get to point A to point B as quick as possible. And so a lot of those times when I had the sling weapon out while using my ultimate, I would holster my gun, and when I went to go bring it back out again, I had one of the primary or secondary weapons that weren't upgraded. So because of the speed boost that he gets, there's no reason when having your sling weapon out to ever need to holster it. You're running at the same speed as if you had your weapon holstered. So again, this is something to be aware of. And if you're using one of the weapons that I recommended, you want to make sure that you're only using this weapon. And there will be times where you need to use the other weapons that aren't upgraded. But if you're in a close, hectic fight, keeping your sling weapon out at all times, using one of the weapons I recommended, high DPS, fast strafe speeds, and super quick reloads will make you a very very scary player to fight against. And of course, when in his ultimate, don't forget to use his tactical as well. That's all I have for you guys right now. He's kind of fun to play, I can't lie. But you'll get my full assessment on him once I finish my solo to master's journey with him. But for now, I think these tips will help you guys out a lot and it might make him a little easier to understand. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you learned something, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you guys enjoy season 17. I'll see you guys next time. Bam, ba, bam, bam, bam. Bam, ba, bam, 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 ba, bam, 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 Bam ba bam 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 bam